Amen. Our Lord loves families. Our Lord loves marriage. Our Lord loves children. And since our Lord loves marriage and family and children, we love marriage and family and children. We receive marriage and family and children as a gift from God. We seek to serve faithfully in our callings within our family as we receive these gifts, as we rejoice in these gifts, as we uphold the gifts of marriage and family and children. Yes, marriage is a gift from God. Marriage is literally older than sin. We heard about it in our Old Testament reading for today. Before there's sin in the world, there is marriage. Marriage in the perfect paradise of the Garden of Eden. Indeed, God creates man, he creates woman, Adam and Eve, and then joins them together as husband and wife. Now, Adam and Eve, man and woman, they're created differently. They're created uniquely but so designed, hand-formed by God, so that even though they are created uniquely, when joined together as husband and wife, they are complementary to one another. Complementary to one another within the marriage. And then by God's design, that continues with the children. Yes, by God's design, a man, a woman, a father, a mother, each created uniquely by God so that they can each bring something that is needed and complementary into the raising and the upbringing of their children. So it is there in the Garden of Eden that God not only establishes marriage, but also sets the pattern for marriage. A man is to leave his father and mother and be united with his wife so that the two become one. Leaving and cleaving, having and holding, loving and serving, just as Christ loves and serves us, his bride. The church. But it didn't take long. After God established that gift of marriage. In the garden of Eden. That Adam and Eve fell into sin. And sin brought strain and strife into their marriage. And sin brings strain and strife into every marriage. Into every family. You put two sinners under the same roof. And there will be strain and strife. Yes, because we are sinners. There's going to be times when we choose selfishness instead of service. Anger instead of love. Resentment rather than forgiveness. Yes, sin manifests itself in every marriage. Because sin manifests itself in every relationship. And of course, when a marriage has a difficult season, there's always the temptation to throw in the towel, to give up. Go your separate ways. Not invest the time and the energy to bring about reconciliation. Renewal within the marriage. And unfortunately, really tragically, in Jesus' day, you actually had many rabbis that were teaching. So you go to synagogue in Jesus' day, and there's a good chance that your rabbi, your teacher at the synagogue, would be telling you this, teaching you this at the synagogue, at church, if you will, that a man can divorce his wife for any reason. That was the popular teaching. If you don't like your wife's cooking, the rabbi said, get rid of her. If you don't find her attractive anymore, send her away. Of course, you can imagine the great damage and hurt this was calling, causing 
as all these divorces were happening. And many times, wives and children had little or no means to support themselves. That's what leads to the question that is asked of Jesus by the Pharisees in our text for today. Because of this terrible false teaching that was out there, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? And what does Jesus do? He answers with a resounding no, and he takes everyone back to the very beginning. He takes them back to Eden. He says no. By God's design, marriage is the lifelong union of one man and one woman. Well, just like many of those rabbis were devaluing and dishonoring, despising even God's gift of marriage and family, we find ourselves in a similar time. Unfortunately, right here and right now. Marriage continues to be redefined by so many people, by our culture today, that many don't even know what marriage truly is, how one is to live within a marriage. And we're basically at the point that you can define marriage in whatever way you want to. Certainly there are many today like the rabbis in Jesus' day, that basically say you can get a divorce for any reason. If you're not happy anymore, get a divorce. Call it quits. Walk away. This devaluing of marriage and family and children, not only... Is it out there in our culture? But we hear it as believers, and I would submit to you this morning, it has affected us as well. That even among Christians, there is this idea that marriage and family and children, that it's more of a burden than a blessing. Oh, don't get married until you've accomplished all your education goals, until you've accomplished all your career goals, because you wouldn't want marriage to hold you back. That's how we're teaching our children. Are they learning that marriage and family and children are a gift from God? And so we shouldn't be surprised today that we're finding more and more couples, married couples, choosing not to have children. Why? Oh, they're too expensive. They take too much time. Too much of a burden. We won't have kids. We'll just get a dog instead. You laugh, but that's the idea that's out there. Not realizing that true joy and fulfillment not, doesn't come from selfishly serving oneself. But true joy, true fulfillment, true meaning actually comes from when we give of ourselves in love and service to one another. There is joy, there is fulfillment in a marriage where husband and wife are mutually loving and serving and caring for one another. There is great joy and fulfillment when God blesses that married couple with children. As they care for those children, as they love those children, as they nurture those children. You know, I realized... I never had so much love to give until I had Nathaniel and Simeon. My guess is many of you parents would say the same thing. Of course, not only the joy of being entrusted with these children to love and to care for and to nurture, 
But as Jesus teaches us in our gospel reading for today, not to keep them away from him and from his gifts, not to keep them away from his church. Remember last week Jesus said, if you do that to one of these little children, if you keep them away from me, if you become this stumbling block, it'd be greater to have a millstone tied around your neck and cast into the sea. What great joy there is when we as parents get to lead our children the waiting arms of our Savior. So, we acknowledge and we rejoice God's gift, marriage and family and children. We receive and we extol these gifts, even if our world despises and seeks to devalue and diminish these gifts. Since our Lord loves marriage and family, God has blessed you with the gift of a spouse. You rejoice in the gift that God has given you in your husband and wife. Has God given you the perfect husband or wife? You would know, right? Of course not. But that also leads to humility. It leads to the understanding what is the biggest obstacle to a marriage stands the test of time. I'm the biggest obstacle. If I allow my pride, my arrogance, my selfishness, my insisting on my own way, my pride, my refusal to forgive, I will ruin my marriage. Same is true for every husband and wife. And that's why every husband and wife needs Jesus. That's why every husband and wife needs forgiveness. That's why every husband and wife needs the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit to transform and to change our hearts so that we don't live for self, but we live for others. Yes, there is a change, a godly transformation when our families, our homes are filled with God's Word. As the Holy Spirit works through that Word so that our marriages better reflect Christ's love for His bride, the church. Oh, what a blessing it is when husband and wife stand next to one another here at the altar of the Lord or kneel together at the altar of the Lord receiving the body and blood of Christ because Christ's forgiveness has its way with us so that our homes then overflow with love and forgiveness as we love as we are loved as we forgive one another as we are forgiven as we serve one another. As our Lord serves us. Since our Lord loves marriage and family and children. We love marriage and family and children. And we do what we can. Seeking God's help. Seeking his forgiveness. To strengthen our families and our homes. And not only do we seek to strengthen our own families and marriages and children, but since family and marriage and children are gifts from God, we do what we can to support and to help others as well. So if you find yourself, if you're married, in one of these difficult and challenging seasons of your marriage. Reach out. Those times are going to happen. There's going to be strife and struggles. 
But don't go at it alone. Reach out to me. Reach out to your brothers and sisters in Christ. So that we can support you and encourage you. So that, Lord willing, we can bring about reconciliation. Renewal in your marriage. Our Lord loves family and marriage and children. To be there when a divorce happens. You know it can be awkward. What should we say? When there's a divorce, there's hurt. We need to be there. We need to be there for the spouse. We need to be there for the kids. Often it's the kids that are hurting and struggling the most when a divorce happens. Our Lord loves family and marriage. We need to realize when we look at our Old Testament reading for today, that by God's design, a marriage was to last forever. Realize it was before sin and death. No marriage was to end. By God's original design, it wasn't until death parts us. And we have to remember that. That probably one of the greatest trials a person may face in their life is the loss of their spouse by death. But that's not the way it's supposed to be. They need our care and our support and our prayers. They walk that dark valley of grief and sorrow. Our Lord loves family and marriage and children. We need to be praying for and encouraging those who desire the gift of marriage and children, but yet still find themselves single. Since our Lord loves family and marriage and children, we need to be there for the married couple that so desires and wants that gift of children, yet finds themselves unable to conceive. Since our Lord loves family and marriage and children, we need to be teaching our own children and grandchildren over against all the noise that is out there that disregards and devalues God's gift of marriage. We need to be teaching our children, our grandchildren, about how marriage and family and children are a gift. They're not a burden, they're a blessing. That true joy and fulfillment in life doesn't come from making millions of dollars and serving yourself, but true joy and fulfillment comes from giving yourself in love and service to others. Since our Lord loves family, and marriage, and children. We seek to serve faithfully in our vocations, in our homes. That we are Christ to our spouse, to our children, children to their parents, so that our homes are filled with the love and the forgiveness of Christ. No marriage and family and children it was a mess in Jesus' day. Again, rabbis teaching. Can divorce for any reason. A lot of hurt, a lot of sorrow. As women and children were literally cast out of their homes by their husbands with no means of support. And then... After Christ's resurrection and ascension, as the gospel goes forth to the Gentiles, to the nations, in the Roman world, for different reasons, marriage and family and children were also despised. You know what? Things changed. There was a revaluing and a greater receiving and rejoicing and appreciating God's gifts 
of marriage and family and children. As you make your way in the first and second and third centuries. And you know why? Well, first and foremost, the gospel changes hearts. And so as the gospel was proclaimed among Jews and Gentiles, as the gospel was proclaimed to the ends of the earth, hearts were changed. And so there was a receiving and rejoicing in marriage and family and children as gifts from God. But you know what else happened in those early centuries of Christianity? You had unbelievers looking at Christian families. Looking at husbands. Actually loving and cherishing their wives. Putting them first. Not treating them as property. You saw wives then in turn as they received their husbands' love and care. Honoring and respecting and loving their husbands. You saw parents, Christian parents, actually loving and caring for their children. Not treating them as glorified slaves. You know what happened in those early centuries of Christianity? You had unbelieving families looking at Christian families saying, I want what they have. I don't want this brokenness, this loneliness. I want a home. I want a family like that. I would submit to you today that we find ourselves at a very similar crossroads. Are we going to order our lives by the creed of the sexual revolution. It's been around long enough that this revolution that promised freedom, look at the hurt, the pain, the loneliness, the brokenness that it has caused. Are we going to conform to our culture and to those values? Or are we going to confess what we've known all along? That the Lord's word, the Lord's way is always the best way. Are we going to say with Joshua, Though all the world forsake the Lord, I and my house, we will serve the Lord. Knowing that when we order our families, our marriages, our homes, our children, by God's will and by God's design, we will be blessed. Knowing that a home where Christ is the center, where His Word abounds, is a home that is filled with his love, his grace, and his forgiveness. Amen. We continue now with the offering and the singing of hymn 605.